what is going on guys today i'm back with another tutorial today i'll be showing you how to make this watch inside of cinema 40 and octane render um, we're going for a very basic watch to do um, this watches can get quite complicated and each watch is different um, so we're going for something very minimalist minimalistic and i'll just show you the basics of how i would go about making this project over here so I just picked a random watch online and we're not going to do this buckle part because there's different types of buckles and they can also get a bit complicated. We're going to make this um, face of the watch and we'll also do the straps and maybe do those rigid parts inside and we'll also maybe do the holes which you're seeing over there. But um, we'll start off with just making this basic piece in the middle and then we'll go from there and see how it goes. So I'll probably do modeling in the first tutorial and then texturing in the next one. Um, it's my first tutorial actually where I'm doing it's my first tutorial where I'm doing quite a bit of modeling and it's not relying heavily on the textures so it's something different and I think it's a bit exciting and it's nice to do something a bit new so um, I have a watch I have not a watch I have a ruler in front of me I always have a ruler on my desk um, I'm always working to scale somewhat and I think this watch will be around five um, centimeters in diameter so I'm just going to divide that by two and that will be the base of our watch so our subdivisions we're going to go off based on where these parts come out extruded now I'm going to go a bit high in subdivisions and you might want to um, not do that you actually might want to reduce the subdivisions and then maybe move these lines until they match up there but I want to keep everything nice and even and nice spherical and also not too complicated. So I'm going to ramp up my subdivisions until um, our line is basically the length of what this piece here that will be extruded is. And I think this is around the right um, amount. But this will be a very high poly model so I would watch out with that. And maybe I would start off with a low subdivision base mesh so that in the end all your subdivisions are nice and low but still nice and smooth. So. This will be the base and we'll start off with this. So I'll go and hit, um, what's it called? Make editable. I'll go make it editable and then hit optimize over there. And then what we'll do is we'll start off. My two scripts at the top here is this basically makes it um, editable and then hits it and optimizes it. This one selects the object and its children and then combines them all together. That's pretty much all the two scripts up there do. Um, so if I hit those quite a lot, that's pretty much all they do. And that's why I made them because I use them all the time. And then this one is just my dissolve. It's not a script, but um, it deletes the line and the points on the, on the, if I go here and I want to get rid of this line, if I go and delete them, it'll delete the face as well. So instead dissolve just removes the line without removing the face. And that's what that one does. Cause I'll be using those three quite a lot. So I thought I'd explain them right at the start. So. First, we'll start off with the base part. Um, so actually a very, very simple watch to do. So it shouldn't take too long. We'll start off by selecting the faces. We'll extrude it inside. Um, I'm just going off me. Thought I put my phone on silent and then the alarm goes off. So as I was saying, I'm just going off eyesight right now. And here you'll see that we have a bit of a inside extrusion over here like that and then we'll like go and extrude this down like so just want to find the right level somewhere there maybe like that and what we'll do is we'll select all our lines on the outside here we'll push those down because as you can see here there's a bit of a slope and then what we'll do is we'll create two lines inside here like so then we'll select these lines, select these lines, we'll bring them in and we're actually going to make this even just so that we can keep the tutorial simple like that and this will be where our glass sits and the reason why I'm not making the glass um, sit flat because I want some nice curves coming out and I'll just make the render look better. Um, as I said, it depends on your watch but this is what I'm doing for mine. So. Um, what we'll do is we will, let's bring these faces up. This is too long, so I'm just gonna bring this like that. What I'll do is there's, a, there's actually a step between this rim here and the arms of the watch. So I'm gonna go and add that in 
like maybe there. So that's where our step will be. And then at the bottom here, I'll probably go and extrude it down like so and scale it in, maybe in it like that. Uh, and then extrude it like so. So there won't be any information at the back of the watch for this tutorial. Um, so I'm just going to keep it very simple. Um, watches sometimes have screws in or writing uh, or whatever they have at the back, but we're not going to focus on that because um, I actually can't see what's at the back of this watch. So I'm going to pretend that there's nothing there. Um, now the arms, this is why I made sure my subdivisions fit around the right size. I'm not going too perfect because it's a tutorial, um, but I'm going to, I'm just going to make sure. So this, this will be the size of our arms over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just going to go and push these in like so. And now if I go and smooth this, see that we're getting our base of our basic shape of our watch. So what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, let's go here and change our clipping to small so we don't have clipping there. I'm going to add in some subdivisions so that our watch has some hardened edges. I'm just going to place them in here and here and here. I'll put one up there as well. And I'll put one here, here, there. And maybe I can go there as well, like that. And I can just turn this up to three and smooth it again. So now you're seeing our base of our watch is pretty much already made. But here I actually want this, this line here. I think I want this to go down here instead. Like so. Something like that. Maybe I'll we'll actually add another line in at the top over here. Like that. So now we're getting our step and then we're getting our arms out here. But our arms don't look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some lines here. I'll probably add in one there. I'll go and reuse it and add it in there as well. And our lines are getting a bit more defined. So we're going to add some more lines in here. So I'm going to go and hit symmetrical. I'll put lines there. Take a look. Now our lines are starting to shape a bit more. And I'll probably go and take these just to smooth these out a bit so it's not so harsh looking. I'll just something like that maybe. And now you're sort of seeing the kind of shape that we're getting over here. And here I'll probably actually, I told myself I wouldn't be a perfectionist, but I think, no, let's not fiddle with that. That's just going to mess things up. So we're going to leave that. <laughs> um, here we have a bit, this part is a bit too smooth and here it's a lot more harsh. So uh, I'm going to honor the, the, the image itself and I'm going to fix that. But this is slightly complicated and you might not want to go ahead and do this, but I'm going to do it anyways for the people that might want to challenge themselves. I'm assuming you don't know how to model that much. Otherwise you wouldn't really be watching this tutorial anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add in some loops on the sides here on the sides here, but I don't want it to mess up this shape over here. Here you can see it's starting to get a bit harsh there. Um, I don't want that to happen there, but I want it to happen here. So what I'm going to do is, let me just undo that. I'm going to add in a loop. No, I'm going to go and create a point in the middle here, 50%. I'll do the same on the side as well, 50%. And then I'll add in one over here at 50% and then over here at 50%. So now here you see that we have some points in between these lines over here. And now I'm going to go and add in our loop. I think I'll make the loop probably around that size. Just be somewhere there like that. I'll go reuse it and add it on that side as well. And then here I'll go and add in a loop at 50% here and then I'll add in a loop of 50% there. So now if I smooth it, it's, well, it doesn't look right now because we haven't connected the little points, but I'll connect all the points first and then show you what exactly is happening over here. And here I should probably actually get rid of this line there and I'll just connect it like so. And then here I'll do the same. Connect it like so, 
and then we want to connect these top pieces and we want to connect these top pieces as well and then the bottom we need to add in our loops again so I'll add in a loop here at 50 and then 50 and then here I'll just get rid of this line here I'll go and add in a new line to connect these two like so and then I'll add in a line there to connect those and then I'll add in a line there to connect these like that so now if I smooth this out you'll see here now everything is fairly even um, but we still get our hardened sides over there and this is obviously personal preference you can um, maybe push these out a bit so that it's more even and more circular and do it however you want to really um, but that's just how I went about doing it in my personal watch projects um, so yeah those are the arms um, I'm actually not happy with this and I told myself I wouldn't do this because it'll mess up the mesh but I'm gonna do it anyway so I'm just gonna push that out like that okay so that's done what I'm gonna do next is the gloss and this is a bit intense a bit time intensive so I'm gonna speed through it when I do it and there's multiple ways of doing this but I'm just I'm just gonna do it this way so I'm gonna take these I'm gonna go mesh commands split and then I'll take this out I'll go and solo it I'll get rid of these lines just so it helps with um, the modeling makes the modeling easier and then what I'll do is I'll extrude these um, up this will be our glass I'm just gonna extrude this up oh that's weird select faces sorry and then extrude up create cap so that the bottom is also capped you know you don't want your glass to have holes in it otherwise you run into issues later but I'll delete the top caps and then I'll close the hole in the middle and then I'm going to connect all these lines together and I'll just speed through it so it doesn't waste too much time. that's all done now so what I can do is just make sure let me go and hit x-ray so I can get these just make sure that the width is around the same ooh the inside part has an error as you can see here I made a mistake here so I'm just gonna quickly fix these two pieces inside here let me just un x ray this like so I'll just go and fix this over here like that and this is just me liking having a clean mesh. You obviously don't have to go to this extreme. Uh, it depends on who's actually seeing your renders and stuff. But I'm just going to make sure that the width and the height is around the same size. So this will be our glass over here. I'll add some loops at the bottom. So this just to make sure that this bottom piece is nice and hard, nice and flat. And then I'll unsolo this. I'll take the faces. Of, let's just go and select these inside faces as well and then I'll just go and push this down quite a bit like that now if I go and smooth this you'll see that we're getting our basic watch face it's nice and smooth like so you can go and hit x-ray and see that we're getting a very nice basic um, thing but you'll see that you might have some weird waves going on here that sort of mess up your mesh um, the way I fix that is um, I usually just add in a loop in the inside here very very small loop and we just go deselect I'll add one there and I'll add one at the bottom piece here don't know why it does that because now you'll have those small rings in the inside but it'll be so small that you can't actually see it but now you see that um, the rest of our thing is nice and flat now it's nice and even and that's basically our glass part of it um, of the mesh there so now our glass is done. I'm just going to hide that and call that glass. I don't want it to distract me too much. Uh, what we can do next is 
Um, here we have a hole on the side, and I'm not sure if I want to make that in the tutorial. That might get a bit complicated, but I think I'll do that part first since that seems to be the most annoying part to do. The way I would go about doing this is I would add in a loop in the middle here, and this can get a bit complicated, so you don't have to do this, but I would do something like that. And then I'll take the face, maybe make it a bit wider. So let's just smooth this out and see. Something like that. And then I'll go and extrude it on the inside. Untick create caps, extrude on the inside. Let's take another look. So um, we're going to go and add in a loop on the inside here, like so. Add in another loop, like so. And now if I smooth this out, you'll see that our edge is nice and harsh. Um, mesh does look a bit weird there, but like I said, this can get a bit complicated to try and make it look perfect. Um, but I feel like this edge is a bit too harsh, so I'm just gonna try and move these loops out a bit. Like that, and then maybe take the second one and spread it out a bit as well, like that. And we won't actually be seeing the inside of this part, so just to save ourselves some polygons, we're going to go and use subdivision surface weights just to make sure that edge is nice and straight there. We're not going to see the inside, so we don't need that to be smoothed out and stuff. Um, so that was actually quite easy to do the hole. As you can see, it's not perfect, but you know, all we really wanted was a basic hole inside the watch. Um, so we create another cylinder. I'll just scale this down by quite a lot, 0.1. And I'll make the subdivisions eight, since it's a very, very, blah, 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 very simple model. And I'll make it editable and optimize it. And then I'll just rotate it 90 degrees, 90 degrees like that. I will make sure that it's fitting in the hole correctly, like so. And I'm gonna scale it down in here. I'm just gonna move it out like so. So I'm gonna go and add in, how does this part look? I'm going off this image. Like you can see there's very various different types, but luckily we have a very simple model. So all we really need is a loop here and maybe one there as well. I'll take this face, I'm gonna go select ring and then I'll just scale this down like so. And then I'll just take the Y of this and then I'll just go and paste it in here so now it's nice and straight. And then here I can go and select these faces in here. I just unsolo that and I can just push this back until it's inside the watch like so. Like that. I can take these faces over here. I can just push this like that and we can sort of see if our sizing is right now. I think this needs to be a lot bigger. So I'm just gonna scale this out by quite a bit. That axis there. You actually wanna be careful here. So I'm gonna do the lines instead so that I'm not affecting the rest of the watch. Let me do the whole watch actually because the whole watch is quite small. Not the watch, the crown I think is what it's called. Now I think the size is getting to what getting to the right size, something like that. So if I go and smooth, no, actually, we actually can't do that first. First we need to do is we need to do is, <laughs> first what we need to do is we need to select these faces here, <laughs> getting tongue twisted here. And we need to go and um, push these out a bit. What I will do is I'll go and bevel these edges, like so. And here you can see a slight bevel, so I'm just going for that. You know, I don't really have any detailed views of this watch, so I'm just going off that right now. Um, I'm gonna add in a loop in there. Do that again, in there. I'll add in a loop in here. I'll add in a loop there, and then there. And then if I go and smooth this out, you'll see now we're kind of getting that shape but I want this to be a bit thicker. So I'm gonna go and select all these lines here, 
like so. And then I'll just push these out until we're getting around that shape there. Um, here, this part here you won't really see, so we don't need to go and add in extra subdivisions. We're just going to use our subdivision weight tool and then just um, bring those in. If you can't find this, I believe you can actually go shift C and then type in subdivision. Then you have your subdivision um, weight subdivision surface and then you can just um, ping that onto your dashboard. Now how do I get rid of this box? Oh, press escape and then that box will go away. That. So now you see we're getting our basic crown. I think it's what I think that's what it's called. Um, so we can go ahead and symmetry this thing, symmetrize, symmetrify, however you want to say it. I don't really know what the actual word is. Um, I'm going to go and delete all the points in the middle. I mean, on the half, on one half of the thing. So I'm going to go and select. And I hate it when I do that. The reason why I don't navigate with my mouse and keyboard is because I switched between Maya and Cinema 4D and those idiots decided to have different commands for different things in their own programs. So I'm forced to use this navigation system so I don't confuse myself and then I actually hit the wrong buttons. Anyway, select the points on the one side. We're going to delete that. We're going to go and bring in a symmetry like so. And we can just go and right click, um, I don't remember how to do this. You wanna make it editable and then right click, connect objects plus delete. And that's pretty much what this script here does. And that's that's pretty much what I'm doing there. And then to make sure all the points are connected, let me just make sure that this doesn't mess up my whole mesh here. Optimize, it does. So I'm gonna go and It's actually all seamed up together quite nicely, so I don't need to do that. Yeah, so I don't need to go and optimize that. Actually, it's fine the way it is. Um, so now it's all symmetrized, symmetrified, and then we can do the inside parts of these handles because those are quite simple to do, I think. We will do these lines on the outside, and here we'll just use a simple cube for that. We'll go one, 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 and then I'll bring that inside a cloner. And radial, and then I'll go, where is this thing? Let's just bring this radius down. Let's go one. Let's bring the size, let's make it editable, and we'll just scale the size down. Maybe something like that, like that, like that. And this will be our very, very small ones, is what we'll do first. I'll start off with that. Something like this. You can do this in Photoshop and have a 2D one, but I think 3D ones look better and they have better reflections and stuff. So I'm going for 3D. And I also don't have to worry about textures and stuff like that. I'm going funky when I smooth them out, which is always nice. Um, I actually don't know how many there are here. Let's go. I don't want to do math because I'll be embarrassing. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 of them, I believe. Like that. And then if I go and what happens if I scale it this way? Let's not do that. That messes up with our mesh itself. So I'm just going to go 1.4. We're going to do it this way. 1.8, 1 1.9. 1 and I also want to make sure that this part here is nice and harsh, so like so, that. Oh, uh, what's happening? I didn't select these, I didn't um, connect these lines here. I just wanna make sure that these are connected correctly, like so. Now we shouldn't have any mesh problems, but this one polygon seems to want to change color for some reason. This is this is the sort of stuff that I deal with every day, so I'm trying not to edit. I, I'll try not to edit this out, and I'll try and sort of problem solve with you guys. Um, so let's go and smooth this out again and see. Still an issue. Not sure. I'm not too sure why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing 
weird going on. Uh, if I optimize this, my lines will probably disappear. So I'm gonna go into my optimize settings and just make sure that this is um, tolerating a bit less. Copy that. Nope, let's do that again. Let's go 0 0.1, like that. Now our face has changed color again and our line has also disappeared here. And that's very confusing, I wonder why. Just get rid of this inside line here quickly. And let's see if anything is weird going on here. No. If I go and try and add in the line again, what happens? Now the line is seems to be working fine. So now if I go and smooth this out, everything should be working. <laughs> but it's not. I have two lines here. That's interesting. Why do I have two lines there? I wonder when that happened. Let me just get rid of this line here. And now the mesh should be fine when it's not. This thing didn't um, symmetrify properly. It's very confusing and very weird. And I think that's only on the one side of the mesh as well. So if I smooth everything out now, Thank God everything is okay. Um, I don't know why, I don't know what was happening there. That's weird. So we're going to add in the lines here again. Oh, now you see problems are starting. And I'm trying, I'll, I'll try not to edit this out so I can sort of um, show you the kind of problems I have and how I go about fixing them because you guys might run into things like this. So if I go and smooth that out now, everything should be okay. Let's go ahead and add in a loop here. Dear God, help my soul. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna go and optimize this just so that we make sure that there's no holes in our mesh. Go and find a, a line that will probably get dis that will probably disappear if I hit optimize. Uh, just so I can judge of that, judge my threshold. Let's hit there. Okay. So now any holes that shouldn't be there should be closed. Let's smooth this again. Let's check the whole mesh to make sure everything is fine. Please just work okay. Now if I try and add in a line, it should work. Thank you. Cool, so if I add in a line here, everything should be fine. There we go. Problem solving, guys. You see, everything is fine. Okay, now we can get back to what we were doing. So <clears throat> here I was trying to get this size around right. I think this needs to be pushed out more like so. And then it's also quite thin like so. Then I'll probably make this 0.8, like that. 0.85. Point eight six. This is me being a perfectionist again. I told myself I wouldn't do this. So I'm just gonna go with that size and then here I'll go and push this down. It would help if this face was actually, I think I'll do that. I'm gonna make the face, um, where is this thing? Let's go here. Ring, let's do the lines. How do I want to do this? Let's do faces here, here, here. And then I'll just make this the center of the world, center of the work plane, so that um, that'll just make the rest of life easier. So now what I can do is I can select the height of these cubes and I can just paste that inside the coordinates. And now you can see it's sitting nice and flat on the floor. We don't have to worry about trying to oh, so on. divide that by two. Now it's sitting nice and flat on the floor and we don't have to worry. It's not perfect, but who cares? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so focus, focus. Um, what we need to do now is these longer-ish lines. Um, here you can see, you might have to do some boo booling, booleans um, over here. So here there's two, four, six of them, of the bigger ones. And we can just go off by copying this and we can go six. 
and then here we can just scale this thing outwards um, like so. So now I'm going to try and scale so that it's not going through the floor too much. So I'm just going to select these faces here and then scale this way. So if I scale out like, so that's not working. Let's go and scale out like, like so. And then we can push this face up like that. And we can probably go and push this face on the side here. Nope, another one. Like that. And I'm trying not, I'll try not to be perfect and I'll just go off eyesight. Um, so maybe there. And then we can take another look over here. Push this down like that. I'm going off this this inside one here, by the way, the the semi small one, like that. I guess that's fine for size. I'll probably want to push this one just slightly inwards, and I think I want to double this to twelve, and then maybe add on another six as well. So we'll go eighteen, and now we'll add in some. Maybe we'll start doing some booleans. Maybe so. What I'll do here is I'll. Instead of a boolean, I will duplicate this. I'm going to solo this, and then I'll make this these cubes inside here quite large. I would say, like that, and then like that. We'll be using this as a mask. So now, if I go and go six, if I go, I think that's right. No, let's go down like that. Yeah, so that will be a nice um, mask, I would say. Now, if I put this in here and I put this on top, now you can see the sort of effect that I was going for. So now if I disable this, let's hide this. If I disable this, um, I think I'm making a mistake here. This is not even, even Steven. <laughs> This number is incorrect. This, where is this thing? Disable this and what's this? Okay, so this should probably be that number there. So now we have two, one, should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So here it should go one. One, two, three. Here it goes, one, two, three, four. Here it should go, one, two, three, four. So if I reduce this number down to there, one, two, no, still too much. One, two, three, four. Didn't know that would be so difficult for my brain to figure that out. So now we've got our <laughs> numbers right. Um, now, if I enable the bool, the, the mask, let's just call this a mask because I don't like the word boolean. I will enable the mask and now you'll see that these parts are cut out. So now if I go and unsolo it, you'll see that's kind of what I was going for. And I'll go and apply that same mask to this one over here. So I'm just going to go and add in our boolean. And then I'll take our mask here and just pop that in there and put that on top. So now you see that these are also getting um, masked out correctly. But here I want this mask to be a bit smaller so that it doesn't mask out too much. So I'm just going to reduce that size down like that. Like that. And now you're sort of seeing what I was going for. But here we actually want these Let's just solo these two at the same time. This is getting a bit time consuming and I apologize, but you know, I don't want to cut out the necessary parts of this tutorial and I feel like this is a bit necessary. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is visible. If I disable that and go and add in some more so that it fits correctly, like so. What I could actually do is I could keep it on 
four. And then I could put it in a group and then I could duplicate it. I could just rotate it like so. Rotate it not that way. Rotate it 45 degree, 30 degrees this way, sorry. And then I'll duplicate it, rotate it 30 degrees this way. And now we're getting what I wanted. So um, now if I go and mask this, everything looks fine. Now we have a space for these four long ones in the middle. So we'll do the four long ones now. And I was getting a long tutorial. <laughs> we will um, we will do the four ones here. So I'll just go and copy this out here. And here we'll go four. And then this one needs to be nice and long. So we'll go and push this out like so. I think that's really all we need to do for that one. Like so. So that's those parts done. Here we have a bit of a circular thing there, but we're not gonna go and add that detail in. Um, we'll do the arms next. Um, so generally they have a small, let's just bring the size down. One. Generally you have the small pin on the, on the inside, like that. I'll maybe reduce the segments down to 10. I think this is the only one that we won't actually optimize, or will we? We will. So I'll actually go here and just increase the subdivisions a bit. We're not going to smooth anything out with this, so we want our subdivisions to be fairly high, but not too high. 0, 5, 0, 4, and let's go 12. Uh, depends on how far away you are from the camera, but I'm going to assume you'll probably get around this close. So now I can go and make it editable. I can select all the lines at the bottom. I'll just probably zero this out. will work. Yeah. And then I'll just push these down like that. Now getting the scale right is a bit tricky. Well, it was for me when I was doing this project, when I was doing my watch project. So I'll try not to be a perfectionist um, once again and just sort of go with it. So when I select these, I'm going to go and bevel this like that. And then I'll go subdivisions four. Let's go three subdivisions. Or we could go four. Let's go with four. I'll push this up a bit. And now we'll add in a... So now that's our little pinpoint in the middle there. That looks slightly big. So I'm just going to scale this in. This is me not being a perfectionist like that. And then I'll create another cylinder. Yeah, let's do that. We'll create another cylinder. I'll go 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and then we'll go 1, 0.1, like that. Uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, and point. Yeah, that actually looks quite quite good. And here we'll go subdivision. We'll set our subdivisions depending on the length of this part over here. So here I'll turn this down to 10. And this will be our our arm. So here we can go quite thick. We can go with maybe eight. And this this one we will smooth out. So you don't need to worry about subdivisions being low here. Like that. Something like that looks right but I don't like how this is not in a straight line. The flat part is not facing the right direction is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to increase that because I want this flat part to extrude straight and not sideways. Something like that. So I'm going to duplicate this and that'll be our save for our different um, minute arms. Um, so I'm going to take this line, this, this face here, I'll probably Let's scale it out slightly, just so that we're getting our length around right. Then I'll just go and extrude it out, and this will be our 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 arm, our our arm, like that. And here you can see scale and stuff is starting to become an issue, and I was a bit worried about that. Yeah, so I'm gonna undo that. I'm just gonna make this a lot bigger a lot bigger on the sides here, like so. Because I feel like this watch is, I feel like this arm is too small. 
um, like that. And the scale is off, but it's fine. I don't really have much, I don't have accurate references of this. So I'm going off eyesight. So that'll be the size of our, of our, our arm. <laughs> another tongue twister for me and then i'll just um take this one again take our save and here i can push this up like so this will be our let's do the minute arm next so the minute arm probably want a bit more subdivisions just to make sure that this thing's a bit smaller maybe go 10. and i'll duplicate it again that'll be our um Second arm save, and then I'll go and make it editable. And then here I'll scale this out slightly, but we don't want it to be bigger to the bigger than the other arm. So probably like that. Now if we go and take this face, this will be a lot longer. So I'm gonna go and extrude this out like somewhere there. Yeah, I think that looks about right. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm just getting a bit confused there, sorry. And um, I think the size looks okay. I think this should actually be a bit smaller. So I'm just gonna go and select these and then I'll select these at the ends as well, like so. And then here I'll go and scale this in. Uh oh, select these. like so, and then I'll scale these in like so. Then I'll probably push these lines out as well. So I'm going to deselect these lines, push these lines out like that. Um, and then this will be our second one, our second arm. And we can push this up like that. Probably push all these three down. These three down like that. And this will be our second arm, so. This one's quite thin. Um, here I can probably increase the subdivisions to 20. Let's go with 18. This one is dramatically thin, so maybe I should go up to 24, 26, something like that. And <clears throat> I'll make this, uh, I'll optimize this. I'll select the face here. I'll extrude this out quite a bit to somewhere around there. And then this back part here also has a, an extrusion over here, but not as extreme. Make sure that's straight, yeah? So I'll extrude this out here as well. Like that. Okay, so that's our arms done. Um, let me just rotate these so that they have some randomness and then I'll smooth them out. Um, like so, like so. So the second arm doesn't need any smoothing since the subdivisions and stuff are quite good, but we do want some bevels so that um, we get some reflections and some li nice um, light catching on the edges of it and stuff. Um, having smooth edges on any one of your models, generally, generally having smooth edges on a model makes it look a lot better. Um, you get a lot of reflections and light catching on the sides and some nice stuff going on there. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to go and select these. I feel like these edges here are gonna give a bit of an issue, but I'm just gonna test it out first and see. Yeah, I felt like that was gonna happen. You can see some weird stuff going on here. So I'm just gonna deselect these. These edges here. And then we will bevel these like so. And we can drop that down to three. So 0 0.1 will be our bevel number. Let's go 0 0.15. And five will be our bevel number. We're actually not gonna bevel the rest, so I don't know why I'm copying that. Um, ooh, I missed something. Select these and then bevel it again. Bevel it again. So it's a good thing I actually copied that. Okay. These ones we're gonna smooth out using different methods. Um, because our base subdivision levels are quite low, we can't just bevel these and assume that the whole thing will be smoothed out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
put in a subdivision surface like that. I'll change this to one, one, and then I'll go, actually, I'm not gonna do that first. I'm gonna show you why I'm doing it that way. I'm gonna select these lines here, or are they already selected? They are. Then I'll select these lines here, and then I'll go and smooth it out. And then I'll go and take my subdivision surface weight tool. My throat is getting really sore. And I actually wanna go and smooth, sorry, I wanna smooth these out as well. And I think these two, so I'll just go and smooth these, select these. And I'll go here and I'll go and do that with my subdivision weight tool. And now you'll see why And now you'll see what we're trying to do here. <laughs> My brain froze there. Uh, maybe, no, let's keep it on one. Guess that's okay. And I guess now that you've done that, you can actually go and you can optimize this and then you can select these lines here, get rid of those and then select these again. Like so. Like so, and then the edges as well, besides this inside one. Let me just make sure everything else is selected nicely. And then we can go and bevel these out as well, like so. These inside parts you can go and delete and do whatever you want with the insides. I'm not really gonna bother with that, um, just for the sake of a tutorial. Don't wanna waste too much time. And then here we'll repeat that same process that we just did. So. Hopefully the lines are already selected, they're not. So I'm just gonna go and select these lines here. Here. <clears throat> select them, select them. Like so. And then we will go and smooth it out by one. Take our subdivision surface weight tool like that. And then here, I actually wanna go and select this as well. And I felt that was happening over here, but I, I didn't really notice it too much. Now I'm really noticing it on this one. So you might wanna select these lines as well here. So now if I go and smooth this out like that, now it looks proper like that. So make it editable. And then we can go and, since we have all these lines selected, um, I'm gonna go and bevel this first, like that. Then I'll get rid of these inside ones since we don't need these, like so. And that's our arms done, and that's pretty much it for, we still have to do the straps, I forgot about that. And I'm, I'm sort of thinking about how I'm going to cut up this tutorial, so I'm a bit worried about that, but I guess for now it's fine. Just go here and take a display tag and go like that. See, now we can see inside and we can also notice that the thing is still there. So I think that's pretty much it for the face. I think we'll wrap up our first tutorial with that and then next tutorial we'll do our, our um, leather arms and then I'll also go into the texturing of the watch. I'll probably do those two in the same tutorial. But thank you guys for watching the first part of the watch tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.